without the alcohol, you're nobody, you're nothing. With alcohol, look at the person that you are. What is addiction? It's the only health condition that you have to admit that you've got. Now, addiction is the obsession and the compulsion. It's the only disease that will tell you you haven't got a disease. But along that way, it will take everything from you. Addiction looks like hell. Trapped in myself. Addiction affects many, many people, more than what you would think, to be honest. There's many types of addiction out there, but mine was alcohol. And it's a need to, to change how I feel, regardless of the consequences. So my, my drug of choice is amphetamines, and with that, uh, just 27 years of addiction. My name is Sam Delaney and I'm a director of Creative Start. But firstly, I'm in recovery, I'm very open and honest about that. And that served me well over the years. My story is not dissimilar, I guess, to a lot of people's stories in terms of childhood. I come from a big, massive family, a huge family. It was pretty full on when we were young because there were so many, so many people about, so many of us about. There was a lot of um, people that I had as role models that were sort of taken away from me at certain times. And, you know, I come from a broken family, as a lot of people do, and um, you're torn apart. You're torn apart. You, you, you don't know what's right and what's wrong. You, but as a child, you get on with it. So looking back, as a child, I felt I just got on with life and everything else. And then, then I discovered alcohol. I'm Ian Gower. My story is I was born in Grimsby. I've got a mother and father and my three older brothers. We had a dysfunctional family. It was violent. There was a violent home and my dad did the best he could with what he had and what he had learned. However, there was a lot of beatings that I got dished out in that, in that family home. And me being the youngest and the smallest, I used to get it from all angles, and I used to get beaten a lot. And then when I was five years old, I was I was raped, I was abused. At 15, that's when the drugs started. My name is James Atkinson. My story is, I'm an alcoholic. I'm sober now. My story started really addiction when I was about 12. I found a way to cope. Well, it gave me an experience that I've never felt blocked, thinking, my notions, all the trauma that I went through as, as a child. And I thought that was my way out. So my name's Lisa and my story is I became an alcoholic. Um, from a, a young age, I'd always had alcohol around me. All my family drunk, so any sort of event that we went to, whether it was a birthday party, a wedding or a funeral, um, there was always alcohol around, especially at family house parties. Um, back then it didn't really faze me, um, but when I sort of got towards 17, 18, I would then drink quite a lot. You know, it, it made me feel like all my insecurities had gone away and my anxiety had lessened. One drink became two, two became three. I used to be so outgoing, I'd go out, I'd enjoy myself. And I went from that to hiding away at home. And this drink that used to make me really happy, in the end made me really, really sad, to the point where I'd be sat crying in the bottle. You know, I couldn't get out of bed without it. You know, it ruled everything. It ruled my kids' life, it ruled school, it ruled everything. And then, and then when it got hard, I lost my kids. So my son used to spit on me in the street if he saw me. Uh, 
None of my family wanted out to do with me. I ended up homeless for five years. You know, I've gone down the path where I used to inject, you know, which I'm not proud of, but it's my story today. It's where I've been. Like, I got raped. I trust someday will rape me. So the disease or addiction, I mean, to me, is hell. My name's Andrew. I was introduced to Creative Start in 2021, and it was a very very angry, <clears throat> lonely, resentful person. Um, my world had kind of closed in. I was, in. I was in a lot of pain. 15 when I first started using, um, and it was a natural progression, a very natural progression, um, into some really hard, serious drugs. Yeah, it was, it was quite a dark time for me. I was an alcoholic when I first tried it. I know that now, and I'm on a path, and I'm on a path to wherever that's going to go. And it starts off all right. I was always a creative person. I loved, I loved art. I, I never really liked much. I, I, I'd just get by at school. I, again, I didn't realise that at the time. I was Everything that I was doing, every job I had, every relationship I had, everything was focused around drinking. Everything. I met someone in a pub, like most of the times, I met someone in a pub and they asked me if I wanted to go to Australia. And that was, I think that was in the late 90s, and I, I went over to Australia for, for, for seven years. And that's when I went psychotic. In, in Australia was where I really did cross the line. But it's where we go from the drinking, being quite sociable, being okay, all right, yeah, like most people, you, you get up, you have a hangover and get back on the saddle. And, and then some of us, something happens something happens and you go to another place and it's so hard when you're in that other place to get back to where you were before i'd stopped taking ecstasy and i turned to cocaine because i was working and, I, and it was a rich man's drug as they called it you know and i was earning enough money to feed a habit that i had and i fitted in with everybody else that was doing it you know it just progressed and when i was on that i felt accepted and then I started to get near my thirties. Things started to take a turn. I never felt right. I never felt good enough to be around people. But the drink kind of made me feel different, the opposite. I had to drink. I had to get drugs. At this point, I was into crack cocaine. I hung myself. And... <clears throat> found and cut down. Well, that didn't stop me from drinking. I planned to commit suicide. Yeah. An ambulance turned on and the police pulled me out of the car before I could actually get into it. Saved my life, basically, because it was happening, do you know. Um, sad and it. I did go mad. I was psychotic. I was out of control. I was unpredictable. I got to a point in Australia where I thought, I've got to go home. I should be dead. I mean, there's no doubt about it. I should be dead. I, I tried to drink myself to death. That's what I wanted to do. I didn't want to be alive. And the choices were put in front of me. Do I want to live? Do I want to die? So I put it down. And it stayed down for 18 years. I made a decision to dedicate my life to helping other people that struggle with addiction. At that point, while I was in that car and I got saved, I had to then act. I had to get clean because I had that burning desire, that gift of desperation, we call it, that I don't want anymore. I need to get clean. And with that, the comeback entered my life. So the Comeback is an abstinence-based recovery centre. Um, we cater for people who have, have gone through the stages of early recovery. So they may go for the drug and alcohol services. And once they are clean, they then come to us. So we are, in effect, like an aftercare centre. It's very real. You know, if someone comes in and we know they're not ready, there's nowhere to hide. You're not going to hide in there. I mean, you can't really deceive people who have deceived in the past. The end of drugs was the beginning of something great for me. Came into recovery broken, very fractured, and 
I built myself up. I built myself up with, with, with friends and people around me that I'd met in recovery. I'd never met anyone in recovery before. The Comeback is an amazing place. It's helped me hell of a lot. Uh, the support's there. To do a lot of artwork, uh, to get people involved, try and give people a bit of a purpose. Um, you know, so you're not stuck in your own head, thinking at home on your own. You can be around like-minded people. Great organisation. And at the time, there was people in there, and it was just recovery-based, and I needed that because I was a kid off the streets, a man off the streets, you know, I was unemployable at that point, and that was a safe place for me to go. Um, sometimes people find it hard to talk, so if they're in a room with people that have gone through the same situation, they can relate to one another. Um, we also provide holistic therapies, um, which is great for well-being. You know, we can physically heal, but sometimes we need to look after other areas of our body, like our skin, our hair, and our nails, all those things we neglect during our addiction. We also offer counselling services to help deal with trauma. You will find most people who have been through addiction have some form of past trauma. You know, life on life terms has really stung me and I've had a lot of heartache in recovery and the comebacks where I can go, I can express who I am, I can be who I am. I don't have to paint this smile on my face. Yeah, the comeback. Full of kind people, you know, that let you express yourself and find yourself. I think a place with like creative start, the comeback, you know, it it was it was run by addicts for addicts and that was a completely new concept to me. It's helped me because I've gained a network of people that understand me. People that not necessarily know everything I've gone through, but in terms of thinking, uh, it's played a big part in my life, uh, early days of sobriety. I had something to get up for and not twiddle my thumbs thinking, how am I going to stay clean today? because I went there around like-minded people and I was taught how to paint. What I found in the painting at the time stilled my fast, crazy thinking. Because it was in front of me, it was in front of me, it was there, there were people that were living life clean and it was like, hang on a minute, that's what I want. I want to be able to, to go into a shop and I want to be able to, you know, look at a shopkeeper in the face and I want to be able to smile on the street. I want to, I want to be confident enough to do these things. And it all started, it started through Creative Start. I use art, really, that's one of the things that I use, creativity, art, whatever it might be. And I, I see my role now as somebody that tries to identify people, what, they, what is their thing, what is their thing that's going to fill that void? I try and bring that out in them. Uh, the Great Escape is a similar concept, but a bit more sort of wider reaching, where it's more about breaking stigma. So there's people in The Great Escape that aren't necessarily in recovery and there's people that are in recovery but you wouldn't know who's who. The actual process of putting Great Escape together is the is the project itself so it's um, almost like a mural so we paint murals as we're you know, well known for painting murals around the town. The Great Escape's like another mural almost it's like we, it, it's like a canvas it's been something that we we could create ourselves on our own ownership on it. It's not my place it's a place now that the recovery community have put together that we can share with other people. Everything we do, every mural we paint, every piece of art, every building that we've got, everything that we've worked on is for one reason. It's for, to show what is possible. So you can go to a drug and alcohol service but you will find those people that are supporting and helping haven't always been through that addiction themselves. You can't walk through somebody's shoes if you've not been through it yourself. Recovery has given me everything. I mean, it's given me everything. It's given me my life back. It's given me honesty, trust, self-respect. All the things that I lost while I was in addiction, recovery's brought them back. We all work together. It is a family. We are a family and we look out for each other.
life of freedom. I don't live a life controlled by a substance or anything like that. And that to me is enough. You have to want it. You have to do it. Only you can do it. But I'd just say take the plunge because life can be different. There is hope out there. People can recover and they can go on to live fulfilling lives. I like who I am today. I'm not going to say I love who I am, but I definitely like who I am today. I'm not scared of mirrors. So I can look myself in the eye today and be proud of myself. I couldn't say that before. Today is totally different. Totally, totally different. My whole life has changed. I'm the only one that's done that. Today I love who I am. I love the person I've become. I'm honest. A lot of people think I'm too honest. People care about you, man, and it's... You know, it'll be alright, everything will be okay. You know, I'm Ian Gower. You can find me, I'm from Grimsby. And I'm not just the only one that's in recovery in this town or anywhere. There's loads of people that will be willing to talk to you, to see where you're at, to reach out. If you think you have a problem, you probably have. You have to ask yourself, are you happy with the life you're living? Are you comfortable waking up every single day feeling the way you feel? If not, why do you keep doing it to yourself? You have to be ready to surrender from drink or drugs and have a little bit of hope. You know, if I'm having a bad day, everybody has bad days. That's fine. You know, come in, be with us when you're having a bad day because you might not feel great when you leave, but you'll feel better than what you did. Realise it's not that bad. These buildings and these murals, this is done by people that didn't want anything from it. They just want to feel part of something. And look what can be achieved. And that's what we're about.